Hello, this is Damien from Fixin PC. Coming to you again with a, another video. This time it's a little project that I'm working on. It's uh, I'm trying to make a self-contained rapid deploy CCTV. Now, the component that would entail is a cellular router. That is a router that is just like a regular wireless router, but for the one port it has the option of using a 4G LTE SIM card. Also I have one IP camera and that is just the basics that I'm going to use for today and it's all being powered by a RAV Power battery pack 2700 sorry 27,000 milliamp hours. So there's two reasons to doing this. One I want to see what can be done one Two, how long would the RAV power battery pack power one camera, two cameras, three cameras? You know, so it's a progressive experiment to see how many it could power for how long. So um, first of all, we have to set it up so it can work properly so that we can set up a point to point on the camera. Today's camera I'll be using is a Hikvision IR Mini Dome network camera. Uh, what's the model number here? DS2CD2532F-I 2.8 millimeter. Alright, and the voltage on that is 12 volt, 5 watt max. It also does PoE at 802.3AF, but today we're not using the PoE function, we just have it plugged in with a 12 volt adapter. So let's jump in, see how this goes. So first things first, we're gonna want to find our router. Now for today's exercise I have the router with uh, Ethernet cable plugged into the one port to simulate internet. I do not yet have a SIM card to, to stick in there. I, uh, I put one in a few days ago. It got internet just fine. It was able to distribute until the credit ran out and then the internet cut. So it is feasible. I will do another video specifically on the router but this one is just to get everything up and running. I'll go into more detail with each device in later videos. So first things first, let's find our router. So how do we find the router? Well, you can see we have a connection to the internet. I don't know if you're going to see that. All right, so we're going to bring up the command prompt. Type in ipconfig. And the information we have on ethernet adapter as we have a subnet. Now I pre-configured this uh, the first attempt with the SIM card so I gave it a subnet of 99.x so the first address is 99.100 and our default gateway is 99.1 so we're going to use that open up our browser and type in IP address 192.168.99.1. All right, so we have a username of admin. I'm not too sure what the password is, though, but I'll just hit login. Right, so I did change the password. Probably should have defaulted this device. Um, what was the pa What would the password be in? Um, oh, there it is. On the first try, good. All right, so after enter the password, this is what you get. So this is the dashboard that you presented with. So here you'll see an internet connection type information, you know, DNS, the IP address of the router itself that it's getting phase one. So it's going out on a 0.x network, which is my home network. Right. I have it plugged in, by the way, with one of um, those power line adapters. So that goes into the wall and has an Ethernet code that comes in. Right. Um, this gives you the system name, you know, how long it's been up. It's been up for uh, 13 minutes. Okay. All right. That's a long time. Okay. Took a while to start this video. All right. So it gives you the hardware version and the software version. Now, this is the Wi Fi. Uh, I've made an SSID. As I said, I'll go through these details, these in detail, in another video on how to configure all of this. All right now, let's head over to the internet. This is something of interest. All right, this is where you can um, 
select your 4G LTE service. As I said, I'll go to much de more detail in another video. But this is where you can do that. You can do a, a lot of different other things too here. L2TP, PPTP, PPP over Ethernet. And you can go dynamic or static. So for today, we're doing dynamic. Right, and this is the multi one and all of this all that good stuff. So for now let me just see what's on the LAN. Right, for now it only sees my laptop. Right? That means it's not seeing the camera. Now to find the camera we're gonna have to use something different. Uh, this is what we're gonna use to find the camera. Let's minimize this. Let's open SADP tool. It's pretty much the fastest way to find a camera that is on the network. So, not seeing the camera. Okay, here it is. It just showed up. Good. 192.168.1.64. Now, first we have to activate it by giving it a password. So, we'll give it a password. Alright, make sure it's strong. And then we can activate it. This is a security feature in um, Vision. A lot of other cameras now, they make you activate with your own password instead of sending it with default passwords. All right, so we'll activate. Now it's activated. We can see, you know, IP address details. Now we want to get it into our subnet. So we'll have to change some of these details. All right, so the first detail we're going to change is the subnet mask. Not the subnet mask, sorry, the network to 99. 64. Alright, and we'll go over here and change the default gateway to 99.1 so you can communicate on the rest of the network. We'll leave everything else as is. Enter the admin password so you can make the changes. Alright, hit modify. Once it's successful, you'll get that. And now we no longer need this. All we just needed to get is the IP address. And make sure we have the HTTP port. So if this is if it is a different number, you're gonna to want to put that in your um, address bar. So we have 192.168.99.64. Right, we can close out this now. If we need it again, we'll reopen it. And we go to the web page and we type in 192.168.99.64, and we will have a landing page. There you go. Now there's a little thing with Chrome and most of these camera systems that they do not show video without a plugin and even though you download the plugin that they give you to, to download it still says download plugin I don't know I've, I've probably been doing it wrong all these years so what I've found a workaround is to use IE tab IE tab that's an extension you can add on to Chrome and what it does it creates an Internet Explorer environment within the Chrome browser and that enables all the plugins and all the ActiveX controls and all of that so that you can actually see video footage. So we go to put in the password that we made using the admin account and we log in and we are presented with the live view page at first. Alright, so we'll get a little bit of footage. Let me see if I could wave something in front of the camera. There you go. So that is live. Alright, now it says the 1st of October 2004. Yep, so we have some configuring to do. So let's jump into configuration. Because we're going to set this up to use the point to point. No, or I'm gonna, I'm, I will change the verification password. So. I'll blow out a lot of the details. So let's start by changing the time. Um, yep, we're at Beijing time. We need to be at uh, Caracas time is close enough. Alright, and um, what I like to do is sync with the computer. I put it in the right time zone, but I sync with the PC and I save that. So my PC is carrying the correct time and date. So I sync it with that. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. We don't have to change much else. You can probably um, change the name to something else. I have uh, other videos with configuring these these devices, and you can watch those videos and and see how to best configure these devices. 
So we just own one, so we probably might want to look into user management if you want to make another user if you want. Uh, but we're going to use it point to point, so we're going to go to the network. All right, you're going to see network information, and all of that, DNS server, all that looks good. And uh, what we want to do is check the NAT. Make sure UPnP is enabled. When using the point to point, you have to make sure it's enabled. I know a lot of people say that um, UPnP is not um, secure, but for the point to point to work, for the matter of this convenience here, which is going to be like temporary, it's going to be up temporarily at any given time um, for the project that I want to do. It's um, it's it's okay. So we go to advanced settings now. And we go to platform access, right? Now oh, it says enable, and it says it's online because I previously did one. <laughs> All right. Now this particular model, right? There's a verification code on it, but the thing is, you have to physically see the camera to get the verification code off the camera. All right. Now, um. This camera has a firmware limitation. I don't think it has any newer firmware which would enable you to change the, um, the verification code. Uh, I know LTS has their, their firmware is like that, and the new Higvision firmware, I believe, is like that too. I could be corrected, let me know. But as everything looks so far, yep, it looks good enough. So, what we're going to do. Point to point is on, so let's get this done. All right, the other thing that you would have to check that I, I did not mention earlier there would be storage considerations. There's a space for SD card slot, so that's where you would have it inserted, and it would show up here. So you would format it and get it ready for recording, and you would enable all your recording doodads and whatever but these would have to be adjusted on site as each site would be different okay so now that we have all this covered we go back to here and we log back in now that we've logged back in we'll go to the LAN and check all right just banner okay Check the DHCP settings, land settings, everything's good. Device list. Alright, it still has not shown up as one of the devices. I have no idea why that is. Let's ping it and see if you know it's supposed to be there. That's another thing with this router in particular. It, 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 it's, it's weird. It shows things and then it doesn't show things. Sure enough, I can ping. So it should show up here. All right, so that would be all that we can configure on this end of the bridge. So let's go over to my cellular phone. So here we'll add, we'll go. We we'll have to do it manually. And this is where the QR code comes in. Sorry, the serial number. So where do we get that serial number information? Well, let's go back to system. Right, so we'll get the serial number from here, which will be the number after the WR. This CCWR, see these nine numbers here? This is your serial number. Usually nine digits. We'll copy that. Let's go over the team view now. What you'll see is that it's ready to go. So we'll add. And this is where the verification code comes in. Alright, now the code is found on the back of the camera. And it's adding. And the adding is complete. So we hit next. And it wants us to give it a name. So we give it a name. Let's give it a name. Give it a friendly name. Uh, 
very genuine, straight to the point meme. So we save that and it will show up on our list as test IP cam one. And then from here, okay. And from here, hit that shows up there and now we have this going full screen now let me do a little wave test oh it's actually here okay it's close enough now there you go within my remote all right so this way you can now view this camera wherever it is deployed